Well, a couple complaints on this one is, is when it breaks, there's a big clunk and it pulls hard to the right. Uh, also, there's a pretty significant lean uh, to the uh, left side on this. seal was leaking and the bearings are so far out of adjustment it's banging back and forth so we're gonna take it apart here and see about replacing the seal and see how the bearings look when we get into it here there's no metal shavings that I saw I stuck my finger in the oil and wiped the bottom and there's no no sparklies on it so that's a good sign Well, the bearings and races were super worn in this hub, so, and the hub seal leaked all over the brakes. Okay, been all new brake linings and everything on there since they were so oily. Uh, I'm always surprised that uh, our local O'Reilly's actually had those brakes in stock on the shelf. They had them delivered here in about 15 minutes after I called them. So I got those on, cleaning up the brake drum now. I'm just doing that. I was putting new races and uh, we have new bearings going in. We had to put the race in the freezer just a little bit before we put it in. Hand me a flashlight real quick then. Thank you. Stick my thing out here a little bit more. Ready? Yep. Well, there is no play whatsoever, no wear on this kingpin. It's in very good shape. Uh, the bushings look great. <clears throat> All the play, the problem with this is the it's improperly shimmed and that knuckle is moving so much. So that's causing the big bang when he's braking and why it's pulling off to one side because the position of the tire is changing. Uh, so just, just shimming this is gonna take care of the problem. It's starting to rain. big lightning and thunder you just missed right before I hit record. The radar still shows it like 30 minutes away, so that's crazy. We're under a severe thunderstorm warning and a tornado watch. That's a crazy storm coming in. dancing in the wind. And these trees aren't little, they're you know, 40 to 60 feet tall. Um, they're, they're really dancing around, it's pretty windy. Yeah, 
assess the storm damage from last night. One thing I noticed is I have tree branches blown all the way up against the, the shop doors here. And I'm uh, not really sure where they came from. But there are branches down everywhere here, just in the parking lot area. Let's go see how the rest of the property looks. I have this whole huge driveway here and I don't understand why bus owners keep driving off of the gravel into the mud over here. Uh, the driveway is probably 15, 18 feet wide here and they keep cutting that corner like that. I don't understand it. it looks like the hill did really good yesterday from the storm, but there's a few little washout areas. biggest one here. I need to get this water on the side. Uh, I need to dig more of a trench, what, maybe three feet over to the left. I need to trench it out here more to get the, the water to flow down there instead of on the edge of the driveway here, which is pretty close to the edge, but it's making this, you know, it's about a foot into the driveway. We don't want anybody going off into the culvert that's right there. But overall, it held up real well, considering how bad the storm was yesterday. Well, this leveling valve was not working because the arm is busted off of the end of it and the mounting bolts were loose, so it was cocked in there. So it wasn't going as high as it used to be, which is probably how, what helped it break. Um, but uh, so we're getting a new arm uh, made for it and we're replacing the valve with a new one. And uh, I need to check the air tanks for oil on this too because I do see quite a bit of oil discharge on this and there shouldn't be that much oil on it. But uh, anyways, this one had failed. This side of the suspension on the rear was not lifting. The tag axle was doing all the lifting on this side, which wasn't much at all. But uh, we got it. He, he, he figured this out before he drove it here and he hooked up a string to this where he could pull it in the fill position to inflate the airbags. And then uh, that way it lifted it up and then he drove it here. But that's the problem he was having. And, Obviously, it's a bad leveling valve. We have gone ahead and replaced the races and bearings are getting replaced uh, on this tag. Um, the races were in really bad shape. They were very worn and dull. Almost looked like somebody had taken like a scotch bright to them. So I don't know how well it's coming up in the video, but you can see how scratched and dull they are. We had it off, just go ahead and replace it and take care of it. Here's the other one. You can see the lip at the bottom too, where it hasn't been touching. I took the sight glass off and cleaned it out. Used a Q-tip with some WD-40 on it and really got in there and scrubbed it out. And then uh, soap and water, looks pretty clean. Should work well now. Jeff's a retired machinist, so he actually remade um, this ball joint down here. See how he took an old bolt and he made that for us. So now we have the working leveling arms. Oops. This is the style that's on there, a little bit different. So we're installing these pull chain trank tank drain, so we just right inside the tire here and just give it a little pull and drain the tanks. So we're going to drill a hole right this little piece of metal here and uh, attach it right there.
Any pins back in. Puckers getting it greased up. Okay, coolant is back in it. The new sight glass is actually visible. Oil's in it, transmission fluid's in it, and hydraulic fluid we changed as well. New oil pan gasket. We're ready to fire it up. We'll come back here. We can hook an exhaust hose to this because it's got the exhaust stack out the roof up there. Um, you can go ahead and start it. We're only gonna run it for about 30 seconds, and if you wanna go up front and just confirm oil pressure once it starts, and then uh, about 30 seconds we can shut it off. So there was only one shim in that kingpin and ended up putting four in. Two, two thick ones and two thin ones, is that what it was? Three, three thick, one thin. Th three thick ones and then one thin one like this. And the thick ones are considerably thicker. Let me have one here. But they're probably three times the width of those. Definitely need shims. We got the thermostats replaced. We can see by the witness marks on them that one of them is clearly not opening as much as the other one. This is that little bit of distance over the little scrape marks. And this one is a lot further, maybe 20% more. Tyler had a little incident here where we were torquing the wheels <clears throat> and the uh, snap-on torque wrench uh, slipped a tooth <laughs> and he banged his head in the side of the bus. You know, you're putting 450, 500 foot-pounds of torque on a wheel. Uh, you're trusting your life on that wrench. So we've been checking the caster settings on here and we have the same setting on both sides, which is right around two, just a hair over two. And then for turntables, I've just been using steel plates on the bottom. Uh, that we've got some grease in between. So there's two two large steel plates down there with grease in between to pivot the wheel on it. And then just using my speedy square to get our 20 degrees each way. Uh, one thing that we have that concerned us to adjust the caster on here, those bolts have arrows on them and you know, they're, they're, they're out around there. There's a lobe on them and they come from the factory where the both arrows on the top and the bottom one are pointing straight up the way the bottom one is right now it's pointing up the top one on this side is pointing straight back it's been re-welded it's the little thing you cut off those little washers and then turn the bolt and then put the washer back on and re-weld it so top one's pointing straight back bottom one's pointing straight up the other side they're both pointing straight up still so something's been done on this side they should be the same but this one is different but then the fact that we're getting a, practically exactly the same <laughs> measurement on each side um, we're going to leave it alone uh, they've, they've obviously done that for some reason uh, we're going to take it for a test drive and see how it handles uh, the kingpin issue is fixed on this side now um, and hopefully it's going to handle real well and uh, but we'll see once we get it on the road your mirror is going to be close there you go stop, here, stop. this mirror Turn the wheel this, yeah, there you go. You got it. Straighten it out. Cut your wheel. 
you never done them down the hill? Nope. I forgot. We worked on your bus at the bottom last time. Yeah. Just make sure we got good air pressure. <laughs> Because you were pumping the brakes quite a bit yeah. on that maneuver we had to do. Yeah. Just try to keep a nice easy pressure on here. Break right here, like, not crazy, but just don't feel any any pull at all. Do you think good. normally you would? the front wheels would have hard. You can do a little harder one here if you want to, as long as you can get everything stowed pretty good. whatsoever. No, no banging either. Yeah. We, we knew that that uh, kingpin was not good. But it's amazing that you can get away with just replacing the shims. So skinny. Like old, the old guys tell you to do. Steering feels responsive and. Accelerate for the brake zone up here. Just yeah. hit, you try your brakes a little bit, just to see for you know on a straight road how it feels at speed. I don't 
don't think you have a muffler. I, I didn't actually look for it, but it doesn't sound like it. When you come through these buildings and stuff, it really echoes. It is, but it's kind of dangerous because you can't really see traffic coming around that corner very well. But, but you can. There's no signs. I guess you can see pretty good now. fact that it's going to still run a little bit cooler. have a bang there too. Yeah. Wow. It may have been a bang, but it would have been a sharp jolt. Or is this just went right over it?
sides, you don't clip the rock. Can you see the rock in your mirror? Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing that part's not going to be here today. It's, it's all the same to you. I'd rather park down here than up there. Oh, okay. drove his Bronco to work today. It's a pretty kick-ass truck, huh? Climb that hill with ease At the top of that mountain There's a new life waiting For those who can make the run They can make it to the top Scott will put them in the shop Till their new life has begun Bus Grease Mountain Where the buses come to run We're gonna get that big job done 